Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another small land vehicle that's great for small encounters, or even just going out and about and scouting for ore patches, and having a bit of defense in case any kind of pesky drones come and interrupt your journey. So this thing seen right behind me is called the Arctodis Skirmisher Rover, which is well this lovely thing that features a small cab cockpit to drive it around. We've got an assault cannon on top, slightly offset, We've got hydrogen engines, O2 H2 generators, a way to suck an auction from the surrounding areas to refill up your tanks, plenty of spotlights, passenger seats, as well as a medium cargo container on the back there to actually load it up with ice to give it a bit of power. So pressing F10 and find this in the spawn menu, the Arctodis is 190 small blocks using the Wasteland, Warfare 2, Degra Block Number 3, Automatoms, Heavy Industry, Warfare 2, and Sparks of the Future DLC packs. We've got one hell of a lot of information about it on the Steam Workshop page, which is the story behind it. Then down to here we can see it uses no mods, does use of course the DLC packs down here, it's printable, it's got scripts, and there's all the stuff about it. And speaking of scripts, this does use the actual car like system, where if I was to hop into the cockpit, here we go, put the camera like this, and now hit left, there we go, that lights up, hit right, it was to move backwards, we didn't get our brake lights, all done automatically, thanks to the programmable block. But yes, what we're going to do is have a look around the outside, and we're going to drive around for a bit, see how it handles, and maybe we'll go across to some space pirates, which are currently sitting in the distance. Now sitting right over there is a salvaging center, and we'll see how this thing handles. So at the very front for this little rover, what we've got is our air vent to suck an auction from the surrounding areas. Then we can see our hydrogen engine, give it a bit of power, with two barred window blocks just sitting on the left and right of that air vent. We've also got some spotlights to light up the darkness, then we've got a bit of blue and a bit of grey steel blocks to go all the way around this vehicle. If we were to move around onto the side that has the sunlight, so there is our cab cockpit to drive this thing around. It's got two searchlights on the left and right hand side, so we can also light up the darkness as well as get a good view all the way around us via the camera function. There's our assault cannon sitting on the top. Then on the side here, here's how our wheels have been set up, with a bunch of batteries sitting behind them to help give it more power. We also have a lovely arrow pointing to the front to make sure you know which way this vehicle is going to be driving. And over onto this section, there's a small little beacon so we can always find this thing. Right next to it is a small programmable block. And as we have to move along, there's another light, there's our weapon locker for your passengers to store their guns inside, there is the seat, one of two for your passengers to go and hop along and come with you on your journey. We also have some fantastic use for our wasteland spotlight, she's adding these little steps going all the way up, with a little nice touch of a neon tube attached onto it, that is a little hopping step. At the very back here, this is our medium cargo container with an access panel on the back of it, so we can open it up, access it, then close it up, and well it gives it a little bit of protection from behind, but it doesn't make it look nice and neat. Moving all the way up, we've got some more neon tubes acting as small antennas. There's the back of our medium car container. Behind our seats, we've got a strip of hazard skin. And all the way along, there's our beacon on that side. There's a small little battery. There's our assault cannon turret. There's the cab cockpit. And there is the top of our hydrogen engines. We would have come along onto this side, so here we are. What we've got is another access panel just to play around with. Doesn't do anything, just there for some decoration. There's another weapon logger, some more lies, and of course more batteries go along behind our wheels. Moving all the way down underneath this thing, here we can see past all the grass. Should be no surprises here. One hell of a lot of batteries make sure you've got plenty of power, so you can ultimately use your hydrogen engine to recharge the batteries. They do start getting low. There's two gyroscopes to make sure we can control this if we do a jump. And there's how the wheels have been all connected up, with some steel blocks going in between all of them. And there we are. That's a brief look around the outside of the Skirmisher Rover. It looks bloody fantastic with how it all been up. It's a very small, very neat vehicle that should do very well in survival mode, means we do have all detector on here, we can easily just drive this thing around, and not worry too much about any kind of drones, any kind of wolves, or any kind of modern enemies that come to attack you, unless of course it is a giant battleship, which does tend to happen with a few modular encounter systems mods. Anyway, grabbing hold of my character, this is what we get for our controls. Number one is to take over our assault cannon on the top, to manually fire it. Number two is to then take over our searchlights, where we have to press number three to turn them on. So pressing number two, now look around here, get a good view of what's going on, in place of having a static camera on the front. Coming out of here, pressing number three is to turn them on and off, that also affects the lights at the front. Number four is then for your hydrogen tanks to stop power on and off, number five is for your batteries to auto or recharge, number six is for your hydrogen engines to turn that on and off, number seven is for your O2 HU generators, number eight is then for your beacon, then number nine is for your ore detector, just in case you want to use it. Over in tab number two, we then got an emergency power supply, which you don't need to have in survival mode. That's simply a small reactor to turn it on and off, just in case you are that far in survival mode, you have access to uranium. Number two and number three are unknown blocks, but if we mouse over them, we see they are to do with the wheels, which would be ultimately to attach on the new wheels, probably on the left and right hand side, just in case one gets damaged and needs to be replaced. That's for that, that's that for the controls. 
So all we got to do now is look in first person view. So here we are, we see our hydrogen power, we see our artificial horizon, there's our gravity, up to there it's in our meters per second. So undoing the parking brake and moving forwards, this is what and yes the lights will automatically do it as soon as you hit left or right. It's really cool actually to look at. Yes, driving this thing around, it's going to take quite some time to get up to its maximum speed, which is going to be roughly 70 meters per second. So it's not going to be scooting around at high speeds like some vehicles can, especially those assisted by atmospheric thrusters. As you can see here, we do get very bouncy, so you may want to turn down the wheel speed, and actually limit it to say 40 meters per second, because that's always a safe speed to have. Of course, that's entirely up to you, and depending on what planet you're on, and how dangerous it is to actually go at high speeds. Anyway, come to a stop. As you can see, the vehicle really wants to tip over front ways, but it has enough weight all the way around it to make sure it doesn't actually lift all the way up and all wheels stay firmly on the ground. If we were to do a tight turn, here we are all the way around, assist it a bit with the mouse. There we are, no problem here whatsoever. It does feel like it wants to tip over, but the way it's been set up, it doesn't seem to be able to do it. So to end this video, what I'm going to do is now bring the free camera back over to here and it's time to visit the space pirates in the distance. And here we are, in the distance there is the space pirate salvaging facility there's a rocket launcher, there's a Gatling gun, should have a few interior turrets around the base, and a few more turrets around the other side. So what I'm going to do is not control the gun, but simply could it drive up to it, and see what kind of destruction we can cause this little vehicle. So here we go, we're going to keep it nice and slow, maybe not too slow to make sure we don't get pummeled by our rocket launcher. We are now 1.3 kilometers away, and hopefully there's no massive jump between me and the station. And well, that'd be a nice way to end this video. So here we go, we're now getting within range of that rocket turret. There we go, the assault cannon has now opened fired. That was a bloody good shot on that galley gun on the side there, but it has not disabled it. Here it goes one more time. That was another bloody good shot. That looks like it has been disabled. No, it has not. Now it's time for me to drive all the way away. Well, it looks like one of our passengers is now completely gone. And our cargo tier has also gone. First person view, we see we've still got a hydrogen engine on the front. Now I need to somehow bring this to a stop so I can turn this thing around. Slamming on the brakes there. There we go. What kind of damage has happened here? A lot of smoke coming off it. We've got plenty of batteries, so we're going to be able to re-engage them. There is one passenger seat right there. He's lost all of his steps. And we should be able to still drive this thing around, and the turret should be able to still shoot it. Means we are in creative mode, and the ammunition connection does not matter. And here we go one more time. It is very difficult to turn this thing. I'm not too sure what's happened to the wheels. They might be somewhat damaged, because I can't really turn this thing. It's 100% relying on the gyroscopes to move this. But here we go one more time. We're now going to drive all the way up to it. Our gun should open fire anytime now. Come on, you can do it. There goes the rockets. And it looks like the gun has now been fully disabled. So we are a complete sitting duck. There goes the hydrogen engine at the front. There goes the wheel at the front. It looks like this is it for the poor little rover. And we're now going to be slowly deconstructed by that gun and gun. But it looks like we have sort of escaped them. And well, that's pretty much it for this vehicle and what it can do. We are in one piece. We can repair this thing up and perhaps get it back to base in one piece, unless of course a drone comes to finish us off. But anyway, that is it for the Arctodis Skirmishing Rover. It's a lovely vehicle to use in your world if you want to have something survival ready and something good for a light bit of combat. There'll be a link to the description below if you wish to download it and play around it yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.